So hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture. So in the previous lecture we had added the buck converter circuit that we had created before. Now just go over to the circuit schematic. So this was the buck converter that we created. So in this lecture or rather in the previous lecture also another thing we had done is we had edited the circuit parameters. So that is this one. So now that we've done with this the next step is to actually build in controls. Now before you build in controls of course you can always run the simulation because control is always optional. Now the only problem is with the buck converter if you don't have control it's pretty much useless. So for example I could go and click on the run run button and always when you run the simulator it's always better to go and check the command line if there has been an error there is no error so we are okay. And here I can add a plot. So for example I can call it output voltage plot and here I just have to click on the voltmeter VO which is the output voltage. Save this waveform, click on done because that's all I need and click on the plot button. So all plots will be saved in the working directory such as this one And you see it's actually it may be a little it may seem a little misleading but it's remember this it's 1 into 10 everything here is into 10 raised to minus 7. So it's actually what you see here is the output voltage is 0.2 microvolts or 0.2 yeah it's 0.2 microvolts. So 0.2 microvolts pretty much means it's 0 volts right. So there is no output voltage and the reason why there is no output voltage is because the default state of the switch is it is turned off. Unless you give it a gate pulse, this switch is turned off. Therefore, the output is not connected to the input, the output voltage is zero. So to solve this problem, let's go and add some control. So the first thing is, let's go back to the main page and go to edit control. So we need to choose a control file. So let's go over to the editor and create a control file. So this is the editor which I use. I use Atom. You can use anything you want. It's all right. So I'm going to First I'm going to add the project folder which is the project folder where we have the simulation. So this is the buck converter so I'm going to just add this folder. So in this folder we have all the files we've created so far. We have the buck converter.csv file. In this I'm going to create another file. So I will call this gate signal.py. It has to be a python file. So make sure that you add this .py file as an extension. So now that I have this, I'm now going to start creating the pulse width modulation scheme that we will be using. So first thing we need to do is, now that we have a pulse width modulation, first thing we need to do is we need to define this file or rather we need to add this file. So let's go over and choose this gate signal.py file that we've created so far and add it. So we'll just call this pulse width modulation. And save the control file. So the file appears here which is what mean, it means it has been saved. So we just go to control, configure the control. So now in terms of configuring control for to be able to generate the pulse width modulations I typically don't need any control inputs. What I need is a control output. So the control output here will be the control going to, to regulate the switch because there's only one controllable element that is the switch S1. So I will just call this S1 gate and the initial value is 0 which means in the initial state this switch is off. So I'll save this output file or rather this output variable and the next most important thing is we'll add a time event variable. So I'll just come over here and call this name of the time event variable is I'll call this T1 initial time is 0 which means it starts right away at the very beginning. You could give it a delay in which case there will be no control until that particular point of time after which the control will start. So now that we have this let me go over to my editor and start using them. So the first thing is I will define a frequency that is a switching frequency. So let me call this SW frequency. Let me go over and increase my font and maybe just a little more. Actually it's still small. Yeah that looks better. So let's define the switching frequency to be around 10,000 hertz. Alright, so let me just put a comment here. So 
switching frequency. So now with the switching frequency of 10,000 Hertz, we need to now define the time steps at which this PWM will work. So for that, I will just run the usual condition clause that is T clock is greater than T1. So T clock is an internal variable to the circuit simulator which carries the running time instant of the simulation. So this carries the current simulation time instant and we are comparing it with the time event that we have defined. So for this, I'm just going to go over here and now we have our control block. So I'm just going to add a comment here saying control code here and let me most important when you define any time event it is important that you update it. So I'm just going to update this time event by a particular DT. Now DT is the sampling time interval. So let me just call give another sampling sampling time interval and let me define this DT to be around well since we have a frequency of 10,000 Hertz what that means is we have a we have a time interval where we have a switching frequency or switching time period of 100 microseconds. If you are switching at 100 microseconds, then I would say we can switch at 1 microsecond or rather we can sample at 1 microsecond. So we have 100 samples in one switching time period. So that's enough resolution to be able to get a good or rather an accurate switching time interval or rather an accurate switching because we need to compare the modulation signal with our carrier waveform. So this is the basic setup of our control file. Now that we've set up this control file, the next step is we need to define the carrier waveform. To define the carrier waveform, let's go back to this, to the simulator and we need to define a static variable. So the first static variable we define is, we will define what is called as carrier signal. And the initial value can be zero. Save the static variable and let's go over to the editor. Actually, let me just copy this so that I don't make a mistake here. And let me paste it here. So I'm going to now define this. So the way to define this first thing is we need to say what is the slope of this. The slope of this will be defined by 1 divided by the time period. So the time period is 1 divided by switching frequency. Right? This is the time period and we are dividing this time period by 1 because the carrier signal will is a sawtooth waveform which will extend from 0 to 1 and then reset back to 0. All right? So we are going to define this. So this is the incremental at every time instant and we are going to add this to the existing carrier signal multiplied by dd. All right? So now the next step is after doing this we need to check if the carrier signal is greater than 1 and if it is we will reset it to 0. So this way the carrier signal goes from 1 to 0 or rather 0 to 1 and then comes back to 0 and this happens over a switching or rather the switching time period which is equal to the reciprocal of the switching frequency. So it's actually 100 microseconds. right? So now that we have this, let us now define a modulation signal of let's say 0.3. Right? Let's define a modulation signal of 0.3. So therefore the duty ratio of the switch is 30%. So now that we have a 30% ratio, the way to generate the PWM is we compare if the modulation signal is greater than the carrier signal. If so, we will change the state of the switch. So let me go over and grab this variable that is s1 gate because this s1 gate is the output variable which is connected to the out which is connected to the controllable element which is the switch so any value that i give to the to this variable s1 gate is directly fed to the control input of the switch so i will go over and paste this and when the modulation signal is greater than the carrier signal the switch is turned on and at all other times the switch is turned off. So now that we have this, we should actually plot some variables so that we can actually also debug and analyze our waveform. So let me go over and add this to the variable storage element. So in the variable storage element, I'm going to add two signals. That is, I'm going to say PWM mod signal 
initial value of the variable is 0, storage status is yes because I do want to store it to the output data file and I do want to plot it. So I'm going to save this variable and I'm going to come back down and I'm going to add another one. Here I'm going to say PWM carrier signal initial value of the variable is 0 and I do want to store it as well. And the last is I'm going to add the actual switching steam signal. So I'm going to call this gate signal. Again, initial value of the variable is 0, plotting status, story status is yes. And with this, I have three variables. So let me go over and add this to my control file. So here, I'm going to say PWM signal is equal to the mod signal I'm going to copy this other one which is the variable storage PWM carrier signal let me equate this to the carrier signal and the last is the gate signal and let me equate this to S1 gate So with this, we have a basic control up and going and I think this is good enough for me to, for us to at least simulate and check out how it looks like, right? If there is an error, we'll debug it. So let's go back and have a look once if I need to add anything else. We are not doing control yet or at least closed loop control, so therefore we don't need a control input. When you're doing closed loop control, then you will need to add a control input because if you want to regulate the output voltage to a certain value and you want to design a PR controller, then you need to measure the output voltage and feed it into your control in control file as a control input. But we are not deciding doing control yet. And we can go back to the main page. Once again, we go back to the output and here, let me run this. So it says simulation running always. Let's go to the command line, check if there's, a if there's any unexpected error. There is none, so we are good to go. And once again, let me plot the output voltage. So the output voltage has been plotted. And you see there is an output voltage. And if you see the value of the output voltage, the output voltage is around 7. And to just verify if this is indeed what we expect, let's just go here. We have a 24 volt output and we just have to multiply this by 0.3. So the expected output voltage is 7.2 and what we get here is in that range. It is around 7 to 7.5. It probably is around 7.2. But so anyway, this is means that the basics, the simulation is indeed running. So with this, I'm just going to go and create one more plot. And, and that plot is going to be the plot of the actual control signals. So let's say I'll call this control plot, start the plot, and here I'm going to add three gate signals. So I'm going to call this carrier wave, carrier waveform. I'm going to add another one, which is the gate signal. I'm going to just call this gate. And I will add my third waveform, which will be the actual modulation signal. So I'll just call this mod. So I've added three waveforms. I'm now done. I can click on the done plot. And I have the second plot. So let me just plot it out. Probably won't work because this is a very condensed plot. But we can always zoom in later. So it has plotted something. Let's come here. And as you can see, this is what I expected because it is a condensed plot. So let's choose a range. So let's say we want the range between 0.14 and 0.15. So let me come back here down and let me say 0.14 and 0.15. So let me plot this. And it turns out it still needs more zooming. That's all right. So let's choose another one. That's 0 0.145 to 0 0.146. 
and we have a signal. So actually I would just go and plot it again and let me choose the range between 0 0.1452 and 0 0.1456 because then we can actually see the crossover points. And this is fantastic. We have a nice good clean waveform. So what's important to understand is in this waveform the green line is the modulation signal. Let me zoom in a little. So the green line is the modulation signal and you can see it is 0.3 because it's a constant because that's what we've set it to. We've set it to a constant value of 0.3. The green or rather the blue line is the carrier waveform. So as you can see the carrier waveform is a sawtooth waveform that starts at 0, goes up to 1 and is reset back to 1, 0. So it becomes a sawtooth waveform which is periodic and repeats as it is. The orange line is the gate signal. This is what is actually fed to the switch. Now when the modulation signal is greater than the carrier signal, so you can see it here, the green line is greater than the blue line, the switch is turned on. So this is when the orange line is a high pulse and we are providing a pulse of 1.0 to the switch, that is when the switch turns on. When the modulation signal is lesser than the carrier waveform, so the green line is lower than the blue line, that's when we reset the gate signal. So the gate signal is zero, we are feeding a gate signal of zero to the switch and the switch is turned off. Right? So this is the pulse width modulation scheme. Okay? So at this point I'm going to stop this lecture and we will analyze the performance of the buck, buck converter in the next lecture. So if you have any doubts, please do post in the Q&A forum or rather post in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. Otherwise, if you have any further interest in this topic, you are welcome to check out my course or online course in Power Electronics, which is listed in this, but in the comments in this or rather the description of this video. So, thank you so much and goodbye for now.